Welcome to the PewterCast. I am Brent Allen, your host, coming at you once again, twice in one week. What? Get out of here. I am joined, as always, by my good buddy, Ren the Narcissist Dax. Ren, how's it going, my friend? Uh, I will now be known as a Duck QB killer, please. Doug QB killer. Doug QB killer. Hey, listen, if you don't catch that reference, just go back one episode. Uh, go all the way to the very end. Uh, <laughs> listen to that. Um, but, Ren, buddy, we, we had something happen a little bit earlier today. And by we, I mean collectively, we as Buccaneer fans had yeah, a little yeah. something happen earlier today. And we said, hey, we should talk about it. Yeah, f- you know, for sure. This is the last time we're going to hear from Jason Light, um, you know, in front of the reporters. Maybe – the last time all year as far as this kind of open mic like mm-hmm. during the draft you know after day one day two we'll probably get him but they're always going to be you know hey why did you select this guy you know was, was this but but as far as and his answer all... will be uh, because we did and we got a good player so let's go high five each other all right. Well, that, wow. That'll be his answer. Like, <laughs> are you a little down on Jason? Light? No, not at all. I'm just saying when you, you know, to go to go to him right after he selects somebody like, so tell us what were you thinking? Like, yeah, you're not going to get some, some nugget or some secret. Or right. Some gossip. Right. He's only going to speak good things about the person. Yeah. And we're really yeah. high at him. Uh, yeah. Really glad he was there. Yeah. We That's loved him from the beginning. Good. We're really excited. He's going to be a Buccaneer. Oh. But we targeted from day one. Right. <laughs> He's our guy. We got our guy. Right. We're right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's one of the very few times of the year that the that the beat writers actually get Jason Light in front of the podium. So anytime that happens, we like to jump on and talk about it because, uh, you know, he's he's the captain of the ship. Right. You know, he, he's the guy with his hand on the on the tiller. And uh, and so, last year, like we didn't even get tweets from him. No, like we didn't we didn't get anything like once once the draft had happened. I, I think I remember that like there there was nothing. It was crickets for Mr. Jason Light. Yeah, you know, uh, he does. Uh, I don't say appear, but yeah, he does a segment before every game with Bucks radio, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah. again, you know, the people are asking the questions are employees of the Buccaneers. You're not going to get really you're not going to hear anything that that. Uh-huh. past sort of the same uh i guess uh avenue that we're going to hear about on the draft night right you know everything's right. gonna be positive doesn't matter if the team's winning or losing you know mm-hmm. it's just gonna be softball questions and and you know go bucks go bucks go bucks so right so like i said it's one of the few times uh for the rest of the year that that the reporters are actually going to be able to ask him some things and you know they did they they hit they, they some some fastballs were thrown in there they did they did so ren why don't we go ahead and jump right into it uh the very first question that was asked our man scott reynolds who was on this show just two episodes ago you guys go back you can listen to that show uh a lot of you have already um like a lot of you so that's actually it's it's uh the most downloaded show of our off season so far ren no, the episode not, of scott yeah. reynolds do what? It's not, it's not saying much. <laughs> we haven't been particularly active this off. So I guess we were. We we've been, you know, I guess on the same pace as we normally do, except for that that three week gap. Sure. We were actually. Were you getting like DMs and tweets like, "Hey, uh, yeah, guys, oh yeah, I, yeah, absolutely." <laughs> oh, I was feeling it. I I like. I mean, and we talked about this on the last episode. Like, it'd been a while. You and I were both itching to get back at it, but you know, it's it actually kind of cool to hear from people like, "Hey, our." our are you guys coming back? Cause uh, we need you. And it's like, no, we're coming. We're coming. Just stuff got in the way. So, um, but anyway, anyway, all that to say, uh, Scott Reynolds kicks it off with a question, barely even really related to the draft. And then he brought it back to the draft a little bit later, asking about one, Mr. Gerald McCoy, um, mm-hmm. not pulling any punches on that one. And, uh, you know, said, Hey, are you guys trading Gerald McCoy? Just flat right. out asked him, and his answer was, "I don't know, probably not." <laughs> his answer was, "Yeah, you uh, asked me that at the owners' meeting, and uh, I answered it, and nothing's changed. It's you know, it's still the he's on our team, right? He's on our team. He's on the team. He's on the team. <laughs> and if he's on the team, he's going to be our starting guy. So there you go. Look, here's the deal, Joe McCoy." We all know the salary cap situation. We know where it is. We know what's been going on. 
the teams just they they can't keep him. That's just where they are, right? So well, they can, but they're still going to have to come up with like somewhere between nine and twelve million dollars to sign their draft pick. Yeah, and that would that would I mean they could you know, but it's it's they're not that the the way they're going to fix this situation is by getting rid of Gerald McCoy's cap hit. That's how they're going to do it. So more, more than likely, yeah. That's that's just what we're waiting on. I'm tired of listening to it. But, uh, you know, he did say he's on the team until he's not. But there was a question that came out of nowhere, Ren, and maybe you know something that I don't know. And you sure. got into it a little bit on Twitter, uh, maybe got in a little bit of hot water. Um, I think probably the most interesting thing that came out about this uh, was we got back to the discussion a little bit of where Gerald has been uh, in terms of these offseason activities so far, the voluntary offseason activities. And mm-hmm. you and I were talking a little bit before the show. We all are very, very much aware that he did not attend the first day. I had actually not heard anything about whether or not he had attended any subsequent days. Right. Or had been in, in phase two. And apparently he has not been anywhere near the building uh, since OTAs have started. Um, and how do we know that? That's, I mean, that's that's what they said today. And it seemed to be fairly well confirmed that Gerald McCoy hasn't been around. Um, yeah, Rick I mean, Stroud asked, asked the question to Jason Light, why did Bruce Arians ask McCoy to stay away from these voluntary workouts? Okay, now pause. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Have, have we ever heard anything about Bruce Arians asking Gerald McCoy to stay away? Because no. this is like either that's news or he's making a presumptive thing. And Jason Light's answer was not, what do you mean he didn't ask him that? That's not what his answer was. His answer was, well, you'd have to ask Bruce why he asked him that. Right. So, so you're which, like, oh, so he did ask him that. Really? Yeah. Which, is that, which, I mean, that's the implication, right? Yeah, it, it definitely implies that that is what happened. Now, if you've listened, if you listen to Stroud's, you know, daily Monday through Friday podcast, he has talked about the McCoy situation, you know, as we all have mm-hmm. uh, on more than one occasion. And he has made mention of that McCoy is not happy with the way this situation is being handled by the Buccaneers because he has spoke to Gerald. Now, I don't know if it's through text or actually on the phone, but he has made contact with Gerald. So if you're going to connect the dots from Rick Stroud's question mm-hmm. and Jason Light's answer, somewhere in this conversation between Stroud and Gerald McCoy about, hey, Mm-hmm. How you doing? How are you feeling? What's going on? And of course, Gerald's not going to give up what's going on. But you would think that somewhere in this conversation, Gerald so said, well, Bruce Arians asked me not to come to voluntary workouts. Sure. And I mean, and, and that's so, not a that's not a stretch because you imagine Rick Stroud being the consummate professional that he is there with the media. He's got Gerald's personal number. Gerald doesn't show up to the to the first day of OTAs or not OTAs, but phase one off-season training, Stroud's going to shoot him a text message or yeah. something. You know, say, hey, Gerald, just checking in on you, making sure you're okay. Uh, you know, why aren't you here? What's going on? Would and like Gerald's response being, right, and Gerald's response being, they told me not to come in. BA told me not to come in. Yeah, somewhere in that back and forth, you you can assume – uh, with a high probability is that what happened because mm-hmm. Stroud stated it as fact in his question, which you said being the constant professional he is, he, he just doesn't make stuff up. It, and it was a very interesting way that he worded it. Like he didn't Stroud didn't say, Hey, I heard this. Can you confirm that Bruce Arians did that? Like right. he, he didn't ask it in that way. Like he full on just said, Hey, this is fact. This is how it is. Why? Yes. And like you said, uh, Jason Light deflected the question to Bruce Arians. And we're probably not going to get Bruce Arians until, once again, draft night. Uh, I think we're going to get him, like, they have some pre-draft um, camp act, like mini camp or something. And we're supposed to get him then. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that is true. But... Um, Bruce Arians at the owners meeting during the breakfast yeah. with the coach, mm-hmm. he, he, he knew like, yeah, this yeah. is, this is, you know, he, he's, he's a wily vet. <laughs> <laughs> he threw out there. He's like, Hey, cause, and the quest line of questioning was about Gerald McCoy. Uh-huh. And he said, when we get into these workouts, don't ask me about players that aren't there. 
Yeah. So connect the dots further. B.A. had already told Gerald not to come. Right. And, and B.A. is telling everybody, don't ask me about Gerald because I'm not going to talk about him because he's not there. Right. Yeah. So. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that that, that makes sense. In this in this whole thing, if you draw the line, the big one being and and this is not a secret. Gerald McCoy comes in, he goes through his workouts, and all uh, 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 who's that? Wait, who's that guy from Seattle that we had the offensive lineman that stole eight million dollars from us one year? Uh, what's his name? Sweezy, Jr. Sweezy, and uh, dude from last year. Uh, I put a voodoo hex on him. Uh, Mitch Unrein. Right, like, like these you guys go voodoo, out. You put a voodoo hex on Mitch Unrein. Yeah, I sure did. Why? Because he completely blew me off when I was out there, and I put voodoo oh, hex on right. him. The next day, he gets a you know career ending. Con- I'm so I did not. Don't <laughs> bad joke gone horribly wrong. I wish don't cross don't cross Brent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appar- apparently, he's a, a Hungarian astute, hex. Yeah, he's astute in the voodoo arts. There you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but. If Gerald is is out there and he rips a pec or a tricep or he gets injured or whatever, breaks his leg, breaks his leg, breaks his hand, breaks any his kind wrist. of an injury, uh, team can't cut him. Can't they, cut him till he's healthy. Yeah, and and they've got to pay him. They got to pay him the money now. And now they got to find that money uh, for the draft picks somewhere else. Hey JPP. How are you looking over there? <laughs> and your fourteen million dollar salary right now. Um, Would you like to be a patriot? Right. We appreciate last year and all, but uh, it's the way it's crumbling. No, uh, okay. So here's the thing, and I'm going to come to your defense, Ren. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> it, it, you threw some stuff out on Twitter earlier today, uh, and and I it. You were you were floating a possibility, and and at the same time, like in your same breath, you were saying, "I do not think this is what would happen. I do not think this is what's going on." But but there's this thing, and so let's talk about it. Let's let's dive into it. Sure. What I oh, basically what I said was, uh, you know, hey, here's an angle no one's talking about. You know, a new. Mm-hmm. little wrinkle to the Gerald McCoy saga is what we just found out. Uh, the Buccaneers have asked Gerald McCoy not to show up. Why? Because if he gets hurt, they owe $13 million. Mm-hmm. They owe him his contract and they're kind of screwed. Uh, so they're protecting themselves against that. Well, some people might think, well, what are the chances he's going to get hurt? I mean, they're just out there jogging. There's no pads. There's no contact. But if it's my $13 million and you play out what Gerald McCoy is thinking, one, and I think this is the most minute part of it, uh, it has been reported by Rick Stroud that he's not happy with the Buccaneers, the way Mm -hmm. they're handling the situation. All right. Gerald McCoy maybe, possibly thinks that he's not going to be a Buccaneer next year. Do you think that the Buccaneers have tried to trade Gerald McCoy so far? Sure they have. Of course. You know why they haven't traded him? Because nobody wants his contract. Uh, Because I'm sure they got some offers back, but like, you know, sixth round, seventh rounders, something like that. And they're like, no, I think we can do better. Like, Mm -hmm. because that's still on the table. Maybe we'll contact you later. We're going to see what else we can do. So there is a real possibility if the, if the Buccaneers can't move Gerald McCoy in this draft, Mm Mm-hmm. You know, somewhere like the fifth round and go six rounds, something like, hey, you're like 15, 20 picks ahead of us. Uh, you, you've you missed out on some of these really good interior defensive linemen. How about we give you Gerald McCoy and we just switch picks? You know, you drop down 10 or 15 spots. We'll go up 10 or 15 spots. The Bucks mm-hmm. dump his salary, $13 million. They have enough money to sign their draft picks, and they get to move up a little bit in the draft. That's pretty much what they have left now. Or they cut him. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're Gerald McCoy and you get cut, how much money are you going to make on the open market? 
I still think Jerry McCoy in the open market isn't going to make like $13 million, especially after the first wave of free agencies would already be over. You know, a lot of teams don't have that type of cap space. Fair enough. If you would assign him for $13 million, then then I get, you know, why then why not trade for him for a six or seventh? I don't know. I, I'm I'm thinking Gerald McCoy, like top end for me, and you know, and I may be wrong, is like eight million dollars. That's about what I was thinking, honestly. So eight million dollars. Yeah, so I think that's a going, reasonable number. Going back to the train of thought that I was going on, so that's a difference of five million dollars. Okay. Now, if Gerald McCoy is angry at the Buccaneers, which I said I I, I don't think he would do this, but Mm-hmm. It's a thirteen million dollar investment. That say it's my thirteen million dollars or your thirteen million dollars. Mm-hmm. Do you trust Gerald McCoy enough, knowing that he's mad at you, to not possibly fake an injury? Because he only he only has to do it till week one. Right. He can sit all out of training camp, and then say, okay, you know, oh, week one's here. Play with the week one game. Next Tuesday, I'm ready to go. And the Bucks own thirteen million dollars. It's just not a smart business risk. Mm-hmm. So that's that's more wh- wh- where I'm coming from. Now, if he ends up making like Sue type money, mm-hmm. then that pokes a lot of holes in my argument as far as that part of it. Yeah, you know, so uh, of of him like of him being mad and doing it. Once I once again, I've said this on Twitter. I don't think Jerome McCoy is the type of person to do that, but I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Right. At the very least, if it's my $13 million, I'm not bringing him in there. Because so, what if he yeah. really does break his wrist? Or right. really does hurt himself where he can't be back till week two? Yes, yes. The 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 bigger question is, is what if he really does hurt himself? Um, let me go back. I agree with you. I honestly think about $8 million is probably about what we would see from him on the open market sure. somewhere. Um the only thing that gives me pause is, you know, and Dominican Sue did not have as good of a year last year. Now, granted, he's not even signed right now. Yeah, he's um, not going to make so that money. he's not going to make that money. My point of saying that it's upwards of that money is just it's market value. That that was the only thing that I was saying higher than that. But I'd say about eight million. But it's five million dollars. Now, listen, I don't care if you've made eighty five million dollars over the course of your career or if you've made eighty five thousand dollars over the course of your career. Five million dollars is a lot of money. Thirteen million dollars is a lot of money, right? Like one one million dollars. One million dollars is a lot of money. No, but it's that's enough money that, um, it's enough money to give anyone pause, right? Now, I think I think it is absolutely insane and stupid and dumb for anyone to think that Gerald McCoy would fake an injury to get that money. However, Jerome however, Bettis did it. Huh? Jerome Bettis did it. <laughs> however, true story. However, even for the most religious and zealous of people, I've been around uh, you know, the the good guys enough to know money can make people do weird things. I don't think he would do it. I'm with you on that. I don't think John McCoy would do it. I think he would find it an insult that anybody would even suggest that he would do that. Oh, he um, would definitely find it an insult. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and I mean, I mean <laughs> that's right, the understatement right. of the year. But here's Gerald, the- insult, Gerald McCoy finding something insulting, first off, is a non story. And then right. when you drag his character into it, right. oh my God, he would, oh, right. Jesus, he, he would pout for three years. <laughs> But see, but see, here's the thing for you and for me and for Bucks fans and for Jason Light and for people who have been around Gerald McCoy over the last nine years of his career, we would sit back and go, that's unfathomable. There's no way Gerald McCoy would do that. We know Gerald McCoy. Here's where your not yours. I, Ren, I don't know if this is a, a thought that's unique to you or if you picked it up from somewhere. Um, here's where that actually starts to make a little bit of sense. Bruce Arians has not been around Gerald McCoy for the last nine years. Bruce Arians doesn't know Gerald McCoy the way that you and I know Gerald McCoy. So if he's the one who's kind of saying, hey, why don't you stay back? I don't know you. I don't trust you. $5 million, $13 million makes people do weird stuff. And, oh, by the way, I really just genuinely don't want you to get hurt. Um, to, To say that that idea might be in the back of Bruce Arians' head, 
maybe that's a possibility. Okay, um, well, uh, we may ask you this. Yeah, would you be willing to risk your thirteen million dollars that Jerry McCoy wouldn't fake an injury to get paid his thirteen million dollars that he signed a contract for? I it's I, I'll be would honest. Would you risk? Would you risk your thirteen million dollars? Mm-hmm. I would risk it. Uh, I, I, here's the thing. The idea that Gerald McCoy would risk an injury or would fake an injury is not even on the table for me. And no, that's not a risk. I would not risk my $13 million to have Gerald McCoy come in and work out and get hurt like for real. The whole idea of him faking it is completely off the table for me. For me. But I've been around. I, you know, I, 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 and I talk like I know Gerald McCoy personally. I don't. I've had one conversation with the man in my life, and it was like two questions. So, didn't he blow you off too? <laughs> no, he didn't. No, actually, no, at, at all. No, I take that back. At three, it was three conversations, um, at different times. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know the guy, but from what I know peripherally okay. as a fan, right. um, the idea that he would even that that whole idea is just absurd to me. And and no, I wouldn't because I don't I don't care if you're faking an injury or not. I don't want you to get hurt for real. All right, I'm done talking about Gerald. How about you? You look a little burnout. You look sad. What happened? Do I, no, I'm not sad. I'm just done talking about Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure our people are done listening about Gerald if they're still listening. It looks like you've hit a moral crossroads. What, are you upset with me because I said I would take if I was in the financial situation I am now that I would take that I would fake an injury to get thirteen million dollars? Look here. Here's the thing. Uh, and I would I would put I'm this gonna to take that as a yes. Anybody. I would put this to anybody out there. Have you ever uh cheated on your taxes? Or have you ever punched a time clock late or moved slow just to eat the clock? Or have you ever, you know, done anything for financial gain that maybe you didn't quite necessarily earn? Anyway, moving on. You got anything you else about Joe you want to talk about? Disappo- you're very disappointed in me that I would do that. It has no, no, actually, it's, it's it had nothing to do with you personal. Uh, no, I'm just done talking about it. It's Gerald's, Gerald's Gerald. Look, Gerald's not going to be on this team next year. I feel like your feelings are hurt. We're going to have no. to talk about this off air. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a powwow. No, we won't. It's okay. Look, here's the deal. If Gerald is on this team come week one, then Fine. I'll turn in my media credentials. No, I won't. No. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> the other people can. Uh, we joke. We kid. Anyway, um, if he's on the team, great. That's fine. Uh, you know, I've got a signed jersey of his right over there. Uh, if he's not, then no one's going to be shocked. You know. Um Yeah. And so, anyway. All right. A couple other things coming out of Jason Light's. <laughs> Coming out of Jason Light's uh, uh, talk today, uh, Kendall Beckwith still not cleared to play. Um, he said something to the effect of, "Yeah, for like the last year, we've been trying to get like an evaluation and let you guys know what's going on. It's just not happened yet, and we're going to try to work on this and get this to you here real soon." Yeah, yeah, the same thing he said <laughs> at the combine. And then the same thing he said at the owners meeting and the same thing they said in week eight of last season and in week seven of last season and in pre camp at mini camp of last year or training camp of last year. Like, you know, it's yeah. As soon as the press conference ended, I I, I put a tweet out about that. And I don't know if, if the guys at Peter report picked it up or not, but Scott Reynolds uh, pretty much on their last pod, which, which dropped today, obviously, because they're talking about this Jason Light interview. He pretty much just aped what I said. It's Jason Light knows that if Kendall Beckwith is coming back or not. Sure. Now, if you believe that to be true, then you also have to believe to be true that he's not coming back because there's no advantage to saying that he is. Right. But they okay. can't cut him until he's held. No, wait. But this is a non-football injury. How does that work? I don't know how that works I, in the context. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Jason Light is – not wanting to say Kendall Beckwith is not going to make it this season or his career is over with the Buccaneers because he doesn't want to send up a flare to all the other NFL teams saying, Hey, we really need linebackers because right. we don't have any right now. But I argue by not just, just lie, bro. Just, just go. Yep. Kendall's going to be back. 
because if that's your outcome, what you're trying to do, why you're not telling the media, mm-hmm. because he's going to string them along to the draft. That's what's going to happen. And then the day after the draft, the next time someone asks him about it, we're probably going to get, yeah, Kendall's not going to be back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he did mention that Kendall's still in the building and he's still working with their trainers and he's still. He was on the practice field last year. Yeah. He got off the PUP list, and they put him out at practice, and it took about two days, and Coach Cutter said, yeah, he's not going to – yeah, it's it's pretty evident he can't make it back. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's – without sort of seeing him run or try to do drills or try to mm-hmm. make cuts or try to run seven-on-sevens, it's really hard for us to understand where he's at. Mm-hmm. And without this information, that's just the way it's going to be. But I would argue that with Jason Light not saying that like oh we're still evaluating is just as is just as bad as saying yeah he's hurt and he's done mm-hmm. like just if if you want to not shoot a flare up saying we need linebackers just lie just lie to the media just be like hey guys and then after it's over be like hey I'm really sorry I lied but it was it was part of our draft strategy mm-hmm. like we didn't want the entire NFL knowing that we needed linebackers desperately because you know what I'm gonna try to make some trades mm-hmm. so. That's where I am on the Kendall Beckwith thing. Do you think Man, he's going to be you are you are a liar and a thief, Ren. No, I'm joking. I don't think you are, Ren. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a liar for the good of my team. And a narcissist. Sorry. And it, well, yeah, duh. Well. I'm the liar for the good of my team, and you're welcome for that, by the way. And I'm a thief for the good of my family. So... Lesser of two evils, my friend. Lesser of two evils. The who cast the first stone. <laughs> well, Trey put out Tim, Trey, Tim, God, Trevor put out a tweet the other day talking about it's something to that like, you know, let anybody who's never done X Y Z be the first one to cast a stone, and I immediately put out a gif because like. I'd never done. I forget exactly what it was, but it was. Like, I think it was some drunk guy from Olive Garden, like half naked, <laughs> shoveling pe- pasta in his mouth. Right, right. It was, it was that. <laughs> it was like, nope. Guessing stones. All right. Uh, he said this, talking about Todd Bowles. Jason right. Light did. He said, uh, he said, you know, if a player isn't ideal at whatever position, he, meaning Todd Bowles, does a great job of th- changing things up to where it does become ideal. Now we've heard this rhetoric this year. Of, yeah, you've heard this rhetoric the last few years. Yeah, exactly. That's where I'm going. This whole like, listen, we play to our players' strengths. We put them in positions to succeed. You know, we we change the scheme to fit the player. We don't change the player to fit the scheme. Blah 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 blah. Mike Smith said the same thing. Todd Bowles said the same thing. I got to be honest. I'm skeptical and I'm tired of hearing this this concept. It sounds great. It sounds good, but I'll believe it when I see it. Communication is key. Don't go bowling with Ren. <laughs> My advice. Don't go bowling with Brent. With Ren. Why? Don't or it's not oh, bowling. Well, don't right. don't oh, yeah, conduct right. an interview at a bowling alley when Ren's in attendance. <laughs> I might throw a few fastballs there. <laughs> I know you're for charity on your free time, but what the hell is going on with the defense, Chris Conti? <laughs> to to all of our new <laughs> listeners who have just joined us in the last couple of weeks or months, I'd like to apologize. We're referencing very old shows and old stories. Well, yeah. um, anyway, all right. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that conversation. It just it, that's one of the things that jumped out at me from Light's thing of just going, I'm I'm I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, I'm with you, and, and you know, and I've talked about the the communication thing when we were at the fan event and they had all the coaches mm-hmm. there you know all you know the big the big coaches all the coordinators and mm-hmm. and uh the head coach including the special team and then uh goodwin godwin 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 no, goodwin. godwin chris goodwin. chris chris goodwin yeah no goodwin. harold yeah, yeah. goodwin harold goodwin chris chris godwin is the player chris evans that is captain america captain america okay i yes. thought he was a human torch he also is the Human Torch. Wow, it is guy, true. That guy—it's quite a resume. And his sister is Jessica Alba. So, what's that? His sister is Jessica Alba. Okay. Moving on. Go ahead. Yeah, we we killed that, didn't we? That was terrible. I will not be surprised if that hits the cutting room floor. 
uh, it's the same thing about communication. We were there at that fan event, and you know, Todd Bowles said, "Well, you know, we got to be able to communicate, and we're gonna, you know, make the defense as complex our players can handle." I just sort of peeked my head around the corner and was like, uh, "Yeah," because that was besides hearing, "Hey, we fit our scheme to our players," which we saw was an absolute lie, especially when you're talking about the cornerbacks under Mike Smith's system. The other thing we heard about was we need to communicate better. Like we heard that for the players. We need to communicate better. We need to communicate. And you heard it for like three years mm-hmm. and it, it, it rarely ever clicked or came together. So you're, yeah, I'm with you on the like, okay, I've heard it. You mm-hmm. know, let's, uh, you got to show me kind of like when Jameis had his interview a while back, he's like, we're going to win. And then he re- he goes, yeah, I know you've heard that before, but <laughs> yeah, so show me, so show me, you know, and, and, and there's the thing like, I you know I've I've said on the show before like in many ways I feel like I don't know this team right now. Like I find it incredibly hard to evaluate players that have been on this team uh appropriately or very well like uh like a Vernon Hargraves like um on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Offense yeah. I feel Phil I've still got a pretty good handle on. But uh you know and in kind of last year I took this stance with our not just our draft picks but also our free agents of Hey, I'm I'm gonna have to wait till we get about six, seven, eight weeks into the season before I judge how good these guys are, right. and I'm I'm maintaining that all the way through this whole year. Like, I it's it I I like to think that I'm an expert on the Buccaneers, but right now I really don't know. Feel like I know this team right now. I, I don't know, know what they're gonna be. I am gonna hold you to this because this is what I think is gonna happen. The Buccaneers defense, like win, lose or draw, they're gonna come out being aggressive and you're really going to like it and they're going to be cracking some skulls and getting some turnovers and Mm -hmm. they are not going to be the reason the bucks lose week in and week out week in and week out week in and week out Mm -hmm. and i think that sort of like by week three Mm -hmm. you're going to be so excited about the new defense that all this i'm waiting till week six or i'm waiting till week eight before i judge is going to go out the window fair enough show me just show me that's all i want you to do show me oh i, oh, I will show you yeah because i'm telling you by week three you're going to be like todd Bowles is the best defensive quarter remember when you said buckner like cutter hired his replacement oh my God. With, with buckner ren. remember that ren <laughs> you remember that i said that do you remember that i I said that because it was a question that had been thrown around Buccaneers social media landscape, and I was bringing it up on the show. That was not me saying that Buckner was going to replace Cutter. I'll check the tape. I'm not sure that, that that's entirely accurate. That's now who's accurate. the liar, Brent? Now who's the liar? It's pointing at me. How am I the liar on that particular instance? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> moving on. Um Buckner for president. They they asked they asked Jason Light about taking a linebacker in the top five. Yeah, and what it would be to take a linebacker in the top five. And uh, Jason Light basically said, "You're thinking that he's going to be a special player and he's going to make an impact." To say that he's Ray Lewis, I think that's a little tough to say. <laughs> and he went on and said some other stuff. Now, to me, that doesn't sound like a man who's getting ready to draft a linebacker in the top five. Okay. Why? Um, well, earlier uh, they had asked him about uh, drafting a quarterback and Kyler Murray and all that kind of stuff, and he kind of just sort of shuffled that one off. He's like, yeah, team's taking a quarterback or Kyler Murray. I'm going to keep that opinion to myself. And then he kind of smirked like he Idiot. didn't think it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it yeah. was very reminiscent of that to me where he's sitting there he's like, yeah, to think he's gonna to take to take a, a linebacker and think he's gonna come out and be Ray Lewis. Come on, guys, that's not that that's that's not really. And this and this became part of a much larger conversation about what do you actually expect out of a rookie, um, right? Regardless yeah. of where you draft him, he's like, look, most rookies need time to develop, and we used to think that they could do it in three, and then we started saying two, and now we want them to go out all pro, all squad, you know, whatever year one, um, and that's basically a little unrealistic, but it just, I don't know. It didn't sound to me like this was a guy who is getting ready to take a a linebacker as a lot of people say that he is. Okay. 
It just doesn't sound like you've had, like that that was a thing he was going to do. So. I hope you're right. I'm not going to sort of make my decision if Jason Light's taking a linebacker or not at five uh, based on – Until we get to just, five? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, like – I, I really don't know. I pray he doesn't. I really do. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Pray might be a strong word. If he ends up taking Devin White at five, I get it. I really do. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, I can make an argument for it. The only problem is I'm on the other side of the argument. Like, that's mm-hmm. just how I feel. I'm sorry. If you think Devin White's the pick, I understand it. I respect it. I think Ed Oliver's the pick. Like, that's the pick. If you don't want it to be Ed Oliver, be another in def- interior defensive lineman. If you don't want it to or actually, no, it should be another. It should be an edge. Just It has to be defensive line. Mm-hmm. My number one pick's Ed Oliver. But I get it. So I'm not going to make my decision what Jason Light, what I think Jason Light's going to do off this interview. Sure. I'm just not going to do it. Fair enough. Uh, and then the only other thing that I really picked up that I thought was noteworthy, talking about the running back situation, said, hey, listen, Bruce feels really good about a running back situation. And, oh, by the way, the guy that's impressed everyone the most, not just the coaching staff, but also the front office staff and the scouts and everybody, has been Rojo. His attitude and the way he's come in this year and the way he's attacking stuff, like that's been really impressive. Confidence growing was the thing I heard about. That. Right, right. Yeah. Now, this is different. This is a different kind of impressive than what you and I heard out of Coach Arians talking about Peyton Barber. When he was talking uh-huh. about Peyton Barber, he was talking about reviewing Peyton Barber's game film, reviewing his practice tape, and going, damn, that kid's impressive. His play right. is impressive. This one, he's talking about Rojo's attitude and the way he's been around the building since coming back from the offseason stuff. His willingness to put in the extra. Right. That's been the thing that's been impressing them now. Um, you know, and maybe if they're, maybe even what they're seeing, you know, if his quickness on the practice field has come back or something like that. Maybe, maybe that's also a little bit what they're talking about. But, um, you know, outside of that, that it's, it's a very different kind of impressive, um, but still worth noting. Yeah, you know, for two reasons. One, it, it was sort of the, the scuttle buck, but, 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 but scuttle butt around, you know, one buck place last year about Ronald Jones, where he just sort of like showed up and was like, okay, where's my starting running back position? Mm-hmm. And, you know, really wasn't interested in putting in the work. You know, really kind of like Vernon Hargraves, his rookie year. You know, he, you know, you had, he needed to re fall in love with football. It's kind of like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, my, my crap don't stink. Where's the ball? Where's my starting position? All right, you know, who's blocking for me? All right, what's going on here? Okay, is that good? We're all good? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to go have lunch. I'll see you guys in 10. You know, that, that sort of, that was a feeling <clears throat> putting pieces together that, that I think some, some people thought Rojo was at. Uh, so it's good to hear that that's sort of gone, I guess. You know, mm-hmm. the way Jason Light described him, there were, there was none of that. And, and you know, maybe he sat him down like he did Vernon before last year. Remember, Vernon was talking about, like, you know, I, they sat me down and they expect a lot from me. And he was playing great during, you know, training camp preseason, even, the you know, the three quarters he got to play. Via Vea was fat, very quickly slipping into – what the hell did Jason Light just do once he finally started to play? Jason Light mm-hmm. sat him down. All of a sudden, turned his whole season around, yeah. and you you could really see, like, oh, that's why you picked him instead of Derwin James. I get it. Oh, a little FYI, I would like to address this here. Uh, if Todd Bowles was our defensive coordinator last year, mm-hmm. I would have wanted Derwin James. Fair enough. Because Todd Bowles has moved Derwin James all over the field like they do in San Diego. So, anyway, so now I've said that. So, uh, the you second mean, thing. You we- mean that the coaching staff you have can actually affect the person that you want to take? Get out of here. Or or what he's going to be able to do or not do in the system. Sure. Yes. It's, 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 it's strange. I know. It's, it's a novel concept. The second re- thing about Rojo is. I've been, you know, standing on the table about don't take a running back in your mock drafts. The Bucks aren't going to take a running back. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly because what Bruce Arian says about Peyton Barber. Then secondary, it was, look, you got a second round draft pick. Like, I understand he was massively disappointing last year. I get it. You know, I'm with you. 
but you still got to give him the ball to see what you got. Mm -hmm. And drafting a guy in the third round or fourth round, it's like, when's Rojo going to get the ball? Like, when are you going to find out what you have? So, and then hearing this from Jason Light, where it's like, hey, we sat Rojo down, and you know what he's done? He's done everything we've asked him, and now he's doing extra and doing more. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's sort of blossoming into a pro right in front of us. So, now hearing Jason say that, and then what I thought Rojo needed to be able to even tell if, if he was a bust or not. And then hearing Bruce Arians say what he says about Peyton Barber every time he opens his mouth, the Bucks aren't taking a running back. No, they're not. There you go. There you go. All right, man. That's all I got out of the Jason Light interview. Did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? I still want to talk about the sad face you got going on. About about me stealing thirteen million dollars from from the Glazers. What if it was like Evil Corp? Would that be okay look, with you? Look, look. Here, here's the question: Are you going to share some of it with me? Do I have to? Is it hush money? Maybe. Or or <laughs> you need it between between. Oh, I always need it. You know? I mean, I owe you money. Let's let's face it. I mean, you know, you've been bringing me to games for two years now. Those tickets aren't free. I haven't paid That's a dime true. for them. But then I've been working for free for you, basically, for two years, too. Work. (laughs) (laughs) All right, man, let's get out of here. Tell the folks where they can find you on the Internet. (laughs) Best place to find me is on Twitter. Watch, because Facebook is dead. Uh, R-E-N underscore D-A-X-T. I'm always down to talk some Buccaneers football. Hey, you did that in one take this time. Good job. All right. I'm, t- I'm a pro, man. I'm, a pro. <laughs> I'm Ronald Jones blossoming in front of you. I'm just really proud of you, man. Really proud of you. I'm impressed. Hey, if you guys want to get in touch with me, you can find me at Brent Allen Live across all the social medias, particularly Twitter and Instagram. I'm there on Facebook. Not as much anymore these days. Uh, you can find the show, though. At- Why is that, Brent? Huh? Why aren't you on Facebook as much anymore these days? Eh, it's just become a cesspool. Anyway, uh, you can find the show on Twitter at the Pewtercast and we are actually on facebook.com forward slash Pewtercast coming soon to Instagram working on getting that up and running uh, you guys can also check us out over at patreon.com forward slash the Pewtercast join the growing community over there we've got a hangout coming out earlier this week so if you guys want to get into that uh, check it out real fast real fast this hangout's happening on Wednesday night so probably tonight as you guys are listening to this show uh, with that Ren Uh, That's going to do it for us. Guys, hey, listen, stay tuned. Lots of Buck stuff coming out. We'll come out with stuff as it happens here through the offseason. And then once the season starts, guys, listen, we're going four times a week. So stay with us. And uh, you guys are awesome. And until then, guys, we'll close the show out. As always, go Bucks. Facebook is a den of for thieves and liars. It's worse than Moss Eisley.